Al Assad affirms to Brujordi that cooperation among the countries of the region is essential to combat terrorism. Russia is satisfied of Syria's positive stand regarding the UN Security Council's resolution on the humanitarian situation in Syria. The Jordanian parliament takes a majority vote on expelling the Israeli ambassador from Amman and summoning the Jordanian ambassador to Tel Aviv. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. President Bashar al-Assad today received head of the National Security and Foreign Policy Committee at the Iranian Shura Council, Dr. Ala al-Din Brujirdi, and the delegation accompanying him. President al-Assad asserted that cooperation among the countries of the region is essential for confronting the extremism and terrorism they are suffering from. President al-Assad pointed out that it is important to maintain coordination among the parliaments of those states and those of friendly countries in order to unify stands in combating Wahhabi thought, which is considered the biggest danger threatening the peoples of the region and the world. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, has affirmed that Syria is open up to all initiatives aimed at reaching a political solution to the crisis under Syrian leadership and on the basis of combating violence and terrorism. Addressing an unofficial session of the UN General Assembly to discuss the humanitarian situation in Syria, al-Jafari stressed Saudi Arabia's involvement in sponsoring and supporting terrorism in Syria. The Saudi delegation has served Israel once again, as Jafari said, when it called for the convention of this session at a time when the UN Security Council was discussing the article on the situation in the Middle East, which is concerned with ending Israel occupation of the occupied Arab lands. In this way, the Saudi hypocrite stand did Israel a favor through distracting attention away from the importance of the article discussed at the UN Security Council on the situation in the Middle East. Al Jafari referred to the Qatari destructive role concerning the crisis in Syria, affirming that the Syrian people will bring to account all those involved in shedding Syrian blood. Al Jafari stressed during an intervention that combating terrorism should be effective and real, recalling that the Saudi regime refused to receive any Syrian refugee and even expelled thousands of Syrians who have been staying in Saudi Arabia for decades. Combating terrorism does not correspond with the formal laws issued by the Security Council at a time when some countries are supporting and instigating the language of hatred. One of the paradoxes is that the Saudi regime, which pretends to sympathize with the plight of the Syrian people, had already denied for the first time in history Syrian pilgrims the religious right to visit Mecca during Al-Hajj season. It also rejected to receive one single Syrian refugee. But on the contrary, it kicked out thousands of Syrian workers who have been living in Saudi Arabia for decades under the pretext of supporting the Syrian government. On his part, Iran's permanent representative to the UN, Mohammad Khuzai, said the presence of terrorist groups in Syria stands in the way of allowing the Syrian people access to the humanitarian assistance and jeopardizes security and stability in the Middle East and the world. Commenting on the Saudi representative's allegations about what he called Iran's intervention in Syria, Khuzai called on all the states interfering in the crisis in Syria, particularly Saudi Arabia, to give up their financial and military support to the extremist armed groups and to see to it that such groups leave the country. Iran's representatives stressed the need for the world community to adopt urgent measures to lay down the appropriate ground for constructive and immediate dialogue between the government and the real opposition in Syria to put an end to the bloodshed. The Russian Foreign Ministry has announced Moscow's satisfaction over the Syrian government's positive reaction to the UN Security Council's Resolution 2139, unanimously taken on the humanitarian situation in Syria. The ministry said 
The Syrian government has affirmed readiness to cooperate with the UN in a manner that serves the implementation of the resolution in delivering the humanitarian assistance in light of respect for Syria's sovereignty and commitment to the basic recognized principles regulating the international humanitarian law. Changes have appeared in this direction, the Russian Foreign Ministry added, as attempts to observe intervals of calm continue to be successfully implemented on the ground. So far amounting to about 40, this would allow actual improvement of the humanitarian situation in various places like Azabadani, Madaya, Berze, the Palestinian Zermuk camp, and eastern Ghouta in Damascus countryside. The Russian ministry pointed out that the earnest task lies in fully implementing the UN Security Council's resolution and ensuring the improvement of civilians' living condition and alleviating their sufferings. Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Jawad Zarif has affirmed that it is the duty of the countries of the region to cooperate in stopping the pace of extremism and terrorism. During a press conference with his Iraqi counterpart, Hushyar Zibari, in Tehran, the Iranian ministry hoped the countries neighboring Syria would help the Syrian people reach a peaceful solution to the crisis. On his part, the Iraqi minister said the crisis in Syria and the spread of terrorism and extremism has its impact in all. In Damascus countryside, residents of Jdeida Tartus took out into the streets in huge demonstrations, emphasizing national principles and in support of the Syrian Arab army in its fight against terrorism. Also in the town of Deir Ali in Damascus countryside, residents held a huge march, asserting their stand alongside the Syrian Arab army, emphasizing that they will fight international terrorism and its groups in Syria. In Latakia, thousands of people gathered in the town of Al Qurdaha in a show of solidarity with the Syrian Arab army, expressing adherence to the national sovereignty. Governor of Latakia, Abdul Qadir Sheikh, stressed the Syrian people's determination to undermine the schemes of sedition which the country's enemies try to instigate. Participants in the rally asserted their support to the Syrian Arab army in its fight to protect the country and to pursue the terrorists. They also emphasized their adherence to the national unity and sovereignty. The martyrs also stressed that the Syrian people alone are the ones entitled to determine their future and to choose their leadership away from any foreign interference. In Damascus countryside, in eastern Ghouta, Syrian Arab armed forces set up an ambush and eliminated dozens of terrorists affiliated to Al Nusra Front and so-called Islam Brigade. The majority of them Saudis, Chechens and Qataris. The Syrian Arab army confiscated their weapons. In Aleppo, units of the Syrian Arab army killed dozens of terrorists in Salah al-Din and Bustan al-Qasr neighborhoods and destroyed their weapons and ammunition. The Syrian Arab army also destroyed terrorist gatherings in the towns and villages of Hadadin, al-Mislmiya, al-Wudaihi and al-Madajin, killing and wounding dozens of them. The Syrian Arab army also liquidated the members of an armed terrorist group during an operation in Sheikh Najjar neighborhood, the industrial town, the free zone and the surroundings of the central prison. In Hama countryside, Syrian Arab army engineering units dismantled a large number of explosive devices weighing between 40 and 60 kilograms planted by armed terrorist groups alongside the highway between Hama and Morak. A military source said that most of the explosive devices included C4 materials, adding that one of the armed groups tried to attack a military checkpoint in the town of Morak, but the Syrian Arab army intercepted them, killing and wounding scores. 
An armed terrorist group targeted Al Basel Dam west of Al Hasaka city, emptying its water into Al Khabur River. After they opened the main gate of the dam and burned the contents of the control room, rendering it unusable. Repair teams rushed into the scene and began checking up the dam lake despite the difficult circumstances, and they were able to close the main gate and confirm the safety of the water. The Lebanese Hezbollah has announced that Israeli warplanes shelled on the 24th of this month one of its positions along the Lebanese Syrian borders near Al Junta district in Al Bekaa province, inflicting material damage on the site. In a statement, Hezbollah dismissed as untrue all reports in news media about targeting its artillery or missiles sites or about the death of resistance men during the attack. Hezbollah described what happened as a flagrant aggression on Lebanon's sovereignty and territories, which confirms the Zionist hostile nature and requires from all to take a clear, candid stand. Hezbollah concluded its statement saying the aggression will not pass without retaliation on the part of the resistance, which will choose the right time, place and means to respond to it. The Jordanian parliament voted by majority to expel the Israeli ambassador from Amman and summoned the Jordanian ambassador from Tel Aviv. 47 Jordanian MPs demanded abolishing Wadi Araba agreement signed between Jordan and the Zionist entity in 1994. The move followed debate inside the Israeli Knesset of a decision to impose mandate on Al-Aqsa Mosque in occupied Jerusalem. The members of the parliament stressed that such a debate represents a violation of the agreement because it denies Jordan the right to supervise the Palestinian holy places inside the occupied territories in the light of the Israeli daily attack on the mosque. Iraqi Prime Minister Nour al-Maliki asserted that the Iraqi troops are pressing ahead in their fight against terrorism, eliminating many terrorists in several Iraqi cities. Al-Maliki said that the government is determined to fend off the terrorists everywhere they are, restoring security and order in the country. The Iraqi Prime Minister emphasized that the army has achieved great accomplishments recently, especially in Al-Ambar, killing dozens of terrorists and arresting several others as part of its task in preserving Iraq's security and sovereignty. In Egypt, armed men blew off the gas line from Egypt to Jordan, south of Al-Arish, north of Sinai, a fourth terrorist attack in the area since the beginning of the year. Sources said that eight armed men in a four-wheel car fled away from the area after the blast. Over two months this year, gas pipelines in Sinai were attacked three times by the armed men. The previous attack took place two weeks ago at al muqtadaba area south of Al-Arish. Finally, and in our local news, Prime Minister Dr. Wael Al-Halaqi has affirmed that national reconciliation is a real asset to a political program aimed at solving the crisis, restoring security and stability to the homeland, and starting the phase of reconstruction and production. Receiving a popular delegation from Busra Sham city, comprising figures of the civil society in the area, Al-Halaqi referred to the role of such figures in enhancing national cohesion and expelling the armed terrorist groups to restore life to the wheel of development. Al-Halaqi stressed the government's keenness on providing services and relief material to the people of Busra Sham and pursuing the armed groups until they are eliminated. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Gunjan, but after a short break.